Those could be our house words, bottom text. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just, sometimes you need something on the screen. So it's literally the first thing that you think of. Zach, hello, it's me. We're, we're doing a video. We're doing a video uh, in what was supposed to be an in-person recording, but logistics. Uh, yes, but my right. basement uh, flooded. Yeah, uh, the I can't believe the, the plumber theory happened in real life. No! Uh, <laughs> oh, um, that's why three of my siblings drowned. <laughs> I'm, oh, man. I didn't know you had that many siblings, but you sure don't now. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, some, of, some of them are oh. secret, insert my real last name. <laughs> oh, man. by the way that's not a bit that's my last name <laughs> zach there's a nerd poll so, in the description there's, dude, that's what i was gonna say there's a nerd poll uh we're doing a q a for our uh hopeful if we get there 1k subscriber special uh if you submit a question we will answer it to the best of our ability yeah uh, so Maybe. go ahead and throw that in there it can be a song of ice and fire related. It can be about us. It can be about a completely different piece of media that you uh, have heard we enjoy or think we might enjoy or think we might know something about or just anything really at all. Yeah, it can be. Uh, it can you be can ask us math questions, I guess. Oh my I might God. be bad. Yeah, at yeah. <laughs> please, please give us a solve for X math question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can do like classic <laughs> uh, personality tests. You can do like speed dating questions yeah uh yeah please give please make us do differential calculus zach said that we'll answer uh, can, it to the best of our ability so now we have yeah. to yes uh that's true uh <laughs> you can uh you can you can hit us with like uh you know history questions uh like deeply uh into the lore of like i don't know fallout games uh like uh or batman or you know anything really uh <laughs> you can you can take questions straight off of your like uh you know homework assignments if you're like in college or high school and just put them right in there and then we'll answer them for you and the homework assignment will have definitely been due before we answer it but you can still see what our answer would have been <laughs> hey zach hey tom big fan really like the show i've been watching for a while but i haven't really interacted before but i was really hoping that you could tell me the themes of the grapes of wrath I really uh, and and like five hundred to a thousand words would be great. I would like. I'm really curious about your thoughts on it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> hey, Zach, I'm, uh, congrats on making one K subscribers. I'm just wondering, what are the primary themes of The Great Gatsby? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, guys! Like I, I've been like I've started reading the Game of Thrones books uh, because you've been like like I've I've been starting to get into them because of your video. It's been awesome. It's been really cool, and I just wanted to know how to factor a polynomial. <laughs> 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 ask ask us straight up like questions like we'll get in legal trouble for answer like uh hey zach hey tom congrats on 1k subscribers uh what's your preferred method of uh cooking math <laughs> <laughs> please give detailed notes <laughs> god oh this is the uh, by far the best bit we've ever done <laughs> yes oh. yeah and the worst part is we're getting all these questions <laughs> <laughs> we're getting all these questions more than once because people won't be able to tell if somebody else already submitted them <laughs> no i will be disappointed if we get any of these questions i will only be happy at the 30 other unrelated questions that are similarly fantastic Hey guys, like, 
you guys got to 1k subscribers you should be really proud of yourselves that's awesome what will you fuck off snapchat i just, <laughs> I just snapchat oh, damn it i just kept going off in my ear <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Good news, you swore after the five minute mark, so we're I, good. I, by only a couple of seconds. We, this video might not get much traction. I'm sorry, YouTube. I was just doing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> hey, oh man. Hey guys, I just wanted to know three to five pages on the spanish american war i just wanted to, i just wanted your thoughts <laughs> i should say we, we did post this in the discord already and we did already have somebody ask for our social security numbers so oh, that was <laughs> oh that was you that was me yeah. <laughs> all right good news everybody you don't need to ask for our address or social security number tom's already got it covered and i know uh, nobody needs to ask about bionicles that one's covered too we did. It was actually the first legitimate question we got as a bionicle question, and I've never seen you more excited. <laughs> yes, I, I, you asked the right people the bionicle question. Was that? I said they asked the right person. That I am the correct person to ask bionicle questions to. Yes. Uh, I have, and this is not a joke. I have read at least two digits numbers of bionicle books. I read a lot of the Bionicle novels as a kid. I'll need a refresher, but I read the Bionicle books and played the Bionicle Mask of Light video game as a child. I have got you on Bionicle lore. Please do not worry. Now we're going to get even more questions. I guess, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so please submit your question to that below poll. And you'll get more uh, stuff from us, including Bionicle lore in a future video. Yeah. Uh, uh, throughout much of middle and high school, the All-American Rejects were my favorite band exclusively because of the, the Bionicle advertisements. And yes, you can use that to try to date me. Anyway, like, like try and guess how old you are or like yes. to like walk up to you in a bar and be like, hey, I heard you like Bionicles. Look, there's there's not a lot of pickup lines that will work on me consistently, but that is on the list. <laughs> you better hey. hope we never have a fan meetup because that's all people will say to you. People are just going to walk up to you seductively say, so I heard you like Bionicles. Hey, I, I heard you have strong feelings on Kopaka. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, I was thinking you remind me a lot of the green paraca, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this this bit is for that person. Nobody else, all right? This bit is for that person. It's exclusively for them, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Zach, uh, I have I'm a sure, I'm sure of the nearly a thousand subscribers, we have more than one person who uh, has some like Legos in their backstory. Uh, okay, uh, let's 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 get to the theory. <laughs> All right, Zach, I have a good theory for you today. A good one. Yeah. Uh, good on uh, we've been on a string of good theories. I think it's been a while since we've had a mini one. Uh, I I so. that can't possibly be the case uh well okay was uh the bones of a dragon's coming to life uh in dragon fire uh a good theory or a meme theory i guess it's pretty good like like it's why pretty good ha like honestly this is a legitimate question because like you can turn it into a why episode pretty easily right why yeah the, the bones of the dragons have to serve some narrative purpose in the same way that yeah. Sam's horn has to serve some narrative purpose, because they yes. keep they keep damn bringing it up. Uh, what is that purpose other than to um to come back to life? That's true. Uh, I actually I the, thought I, I thought of something last, actually. I guess the last dumb theory then is that Joffrey died of rabies, but like even then, 
We shouldn't treat that like it was a dumb meme theory. <laughs> Zach, that is a dumb theory, but there's also no reason it can't be the case other than plot and uh, and logistics. Uh, the, there's a lot of interesting things that you notice when you start to look down that very dumb rabbit hole. Uh, the, also, we learned a lot of things about about rabies. We did. In the comments of that video, like, everyone, get, like, after you're done with, obviously, after you're done with this video, go over to that video and read the comments. There's a lot of people who are like, no, actually, this is how rabies work. And, like, some people yeah, are I like, a lot. like I gotta, I gotta give credit to people who knew how it worked in the comments. It's incredible. Uh, yeah. All right, Zach. Are you, wait a minute, before we move on, uh, on the subject of the, of the dragon skulls. I actually yes. thought of another narrative reason that they could be down there. Um, Ooh. Yes. Uh, we know that uh, Valyrian steel kills White Walkers and uh, Obsidian kills White Walkers. Uh, what if dragon teeth can also kill White Walkers? Ooh, that's interesting. It also kind of reminds me of uh, the... Um... Vikings were thought to have more powerful uh, swords in the Middle Ages because they would uh, take, like, I don't know if I mentioned this in the video or not, or any of our videos or not, but they would take, like, bones of animals and they would forge them into their blades because they thought it would put animal magic in their swords. And instead, what they did was they were putting carbon in and therefore reinforcing steel, like, uh, you know, and making stronger blades. But to them, it just proved that bone magic exists. Uh, I should note that there are also a lot of, like, you know, George Martin loves his mythology. Um, yeah. And, and in ancient Greek, and I'm pretty sure some other mythologies, there are, the, there are thoughts that the teeth of dead creatures held magic power. If I recall correctly, the teeth of dead magical creatures could be planted in ancient Greek mythology, and scary creatures would grow from those plants. Somebody, somebody, tell me what I'm remembering in the comments, please, because uh, I, I, I seem yeah. to recall that, think, or, or maybe I that think was just I think somebody also I think I did mention the Viking bone thing before, and somebody gave me a slight correct in the comments, yeah. I'm ignoring. But uh, yeah, they thought they were doing yeah. magic, but they were actually just doing chemistry. Yes. <laughs> that's the that's the more interesting point of it. I mean, it's like the uh, um, ma uh, magic is just poorly understood science, or science is just a uh, really well figured out magic uh, argument you could make. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so we have we have the heart of a theory here. Yeah, we have the opening quote here. The field of fire was fought between House Targaryen and Kingdoms of the Rock in the Reach. Uh, I do you want to uh, tell people how the game is played in case they've never watched before? Sure. Uh, this game, this game is called "Give Me Another Card." Uh, I have uh, uh, concocted a theory in my little Tom brain over here. I think that it's a very good theory in this case, uh, though it isn't always. Uh, and I have assembled on this list twenty-one pieces of evidence supporting this theory. Uh, as Zach is pondering and moving through the, the uh, his extensive uh, brain space catacombs dedicated to A Song of Ice and Fire, he will try to poke and prod in different directions. If he ever hits one of these pieces of evidence, he gets a ding uh, and a point if we have ever been keeping score. Uh, I trust the people in the comments to continue to keep score for us. Um, and uh, uh, if he is ever stuck... He can say, give me another card, and I will roll a die, a 20-sided die, uh, and give him one of the one of the pieces of evidence on this list. Uh, and he wins when he gets to the end. Uh, and I win Tom, I win if he agrees. Uh yes. Tom, uh I'm gonna I'm gonna try and uh really uh hit as many dings as I think I can get out the gate. Ready? Okay. Uh Marjorie Tyrell is married to Tom and Baratheon. Uh, oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> um, Troth, I guess. No. Uh, Marjorie Tyrell almost marries Joffrey Baratheon. Uh, the Baratheon kills are Lannisters. 
in the Bad Dragon show, uh, Danny uh, Burns King's Landing in the Bad Dragon show, wait, wait, the Tyrell what children were burned say? alive. Uh, wait, uh, hold on, hold on. Go back to right before before you said King's Landing. Uh, in the Bad Dragon show, Danny uh, Burns King's Landing. Uh, uh, for that, I. Do not have that on my list. No, no, that okay. is that is close, close, and not unrelated, but not on the list. Okay, okay. Let me let me show where my thought process is coming from. Here. Okay, go ahead. This uh, the kingdoms in the rock and the reach uh, were, I believe the uh, it was the gardeners and not the Tyrells yet, but I do believe it was still the Lannisters. Uh, that is correct. Fighting against House Targaryen during the conquest. Uh, and if you look right now who the power brokers are in Westeros, it's an alliance between the Reach and the Rock. It is uh, the Lannisters at this point, led predominantly by Cersei. Kevin was doing a lot of the actual like housekeeping, but he has recently uh, experienced severe chest pains. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> He, he, uh, he and Varys quarreled. He and Varys quarreled. Uh, yes. And that power is held up by the Tyrells, who have given uh, backing to, militarily and politically, the Lannisters, uh, with Mace being a important power broker in King's Landing. Mace, of course, not fully in control himself as a lot of schemers in his family were really, if you believe uh, what the show has to say and what the books kind of imply, other people running the show for him. Uh, and yeah, the field of fire was when the gardeners were wiped out and their stewards, the Tyrells took over and basically just filled in the role that the gardeners had as leaders of the reach. Uh, ding, 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 by the way. We're, we're beginning to rock here already. Good, good. So... And I should know, uh, Mace Tyrell, along with his children... Uh, go up in smokes in the Bad Dragon show. They uh, get burnt by Cersei's wildfire in a trial with the High Sparrow, which presumably is not exactly what will happen in the books, but there's reason to believe that similar things could happen uh, when the Sept of Baelor gets exploded. Uh, I do not have the detonation of the Sept of Baylor on my list. It could be, but if it was, it would be thematic, not direct. Huh. A thematic a thematic connection, not a direct connection. Interesting. So Danny I, I is coming you're, back. Yeah, you're you're digging in some rich veins right now. Please continue. Yeah, D Danny is coming back uh, and might burn King's Landing. She might also burn the Godswood, if you believe my uh, take on the theory, because King's Landing might be burned by somebody else. There's an argument for Cersei burning King's Landing. There's an argument for young Griff burning King's Landing because he has Griff with him there. He has John Connington, who has some serious trauma about bells. And uh, there's also... Uh, bells ringing in the Bad Dragon show when King's Landing is burnt, which has led many fans to speculate that it will actually be John Connington going mad when bells ring and uh, committing war crimes. Uh, so that is a possibility, but there's also other ways that the uh, Tyrells could go out. Although this one seems to imply that they'll go out in a way that has a lot of fire with it. Hmm. Let's let's hit on the the king uh, the kingdom of the rock here, because that's the Westerlands, that's the Lannisters, and presumably they have a piece of this theory too. 
So we don't have a, a ton of prominent Lannisters in Westeros anymore. Tyrion went off on uh, a wild and wacky fun adventure uh, where nothing dark and bad happens. Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, Tyrion, is, Tyrion is like on Disney, uh, out at Disneyland. He's he's on a cruise actually. When you think yeah. about it. <laughs> um. Yeah, he uh, after he, he took some time off after the uh, unfortunate death of his uh, father and nephew. He really needed to get away, so he went on a cruise. Uh, but yeah, there is the Lannisters. They also tried to resist the Targaryens. I believe their forces were also burnt to death, uh, including some of their leaders. Uh, but they managed to survive as a house and later became pretty good allies of certain branches of the Targaryen family. Uh, I remember that dragons for certain members would uh, hang out at Castle Rock, I believe. That was a place that um, Jaehaerys' wife, I'm forgetting her name, I think sometimes went to Casterly Rock when she was mad at him. Uh, I, I, or... believe, I believe that Alysanne liked to go to Dragonstone. Uh, Somebody liked to take their dragon to Castle Rock, and I'm forgetting who. I think it was... Oh, no. Oh, no. One of the, one of the Targaryens that starts with an R. Uh, the, the oh, mother, great. The mother, uh, the mother of... Um, uh, of Aria, the one who goes and and tries to ride Valerion back to Valeria. Whatever her mom's name is, she went. She spent some time at Casterly Rock, and th they tried to like schmooze her way into getting a dragon. That makes sense. Yeah, and, and these uh, books are good. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of people uh, riding their dragons to big stony places. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, speaking of big stony places, uh. I have been smoking a lot. Anyway, um, <laughs> Zach, uh, just to make sure, I actually have this written down so as to make sure that you don't go barking up the wrong tree too much. You want me to give it to you? It's it's connected to what you're saying. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, King Lauren the King Lauren the First Lannister escaped the field of fire uh, without. Escaped the field of fire unharmed. That is oh. not. That is not on the list. That is not on the list. Yes. So the okay. the, the Lannisters, though though certainly connected, and we can we can start building like they they will be part of the story that I'm telling here, but they're not the main focus in any way. This is about the downfall of House Tyrell. Uh, I think you could say that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, As in the Bad fact, Dragon show, Danny burns people from the Reach. She burns, uh, uh, Sam's dad. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, do, um, yes. Yeah, uh. Yes, um, that is not, mm. We're close enough, we're close enough, right? Okay. In, in the bad dragon show. Uh, Lannister forces are uh, are caught outside High Garden by Daenerys. D a n a e y r s. Is that the scene with Dickon and Tarly? No, that's a that is a different scene. Uh, uh, oh, oh, um, oh God, I don't know, I don't remember. Uh, I've started a rewatch of the series, so I'll tell you in a couple of years. <laughs> Daenerys and Drogon. Yes. And I think that now is a good time to say that this theory... We're going to see what this looks like in white. Whoops. I saw, you, I saw you try and divide it in two earlier. Yeah, we're actually dividing it in three. Ooh. So we've touched on... The, we're touching on the big one. 
but there's two other sizable chunks. Does that look okay? I feel like it looks okay. That looks fine by me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So one of them is the historical downfall uh, of the gardeners and the parallels we can draw from, uh, like, the Tyrells. It is worth noting that there isn't a Tyrell left alive at the end of the Bad Dragon show. They give High Garden to Brawn. That dude, they give high they give high garden to Braun to Sir Braun of the Blackwater. Sir Braun of the Blackwater, noted mid-level D D character. <laughs> He's literally just a D D protagonist. He just takes a mission and ends up in another mission and goes from like just some guy with a sword to like a, a major player in uh the kingdom's politics. That is just a D D campaign. <laughs> He's uh, even there for the final boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> so you were referencing a little while ago. Um, can you give me like a like a three sentence description of of Marjorie's marriage plans? She uh, mar- she almost marries Renly Baratheon, uh, and then he dies. She almost marries Joffrey Baratheon, and then he dies. And she almost marries Tommen Baratheon, and then she dies, and he dies immediately afterwards. The Tyrells. And you, and tell me if you don't like this phrasing. The Tyrells are in service, service and alliance in turn with Renly Baratheon, Tywin Lannister, and Cersei Lannister. Yeah, the people the people who are actually cutting the deals that the marriage represents, right? Yes. Because uh, what you know in feudalism, uh and especially so as feudalism is portrayed in a song of ice and fire, marriages are more than just marriages. They are ways to ensure people are forced to work together. The bloodlines get, you know, uh, merged. These people are producing children with each other. They spend all the time together. The families better damn well get along, right? So that means that Tywin and Cersei are actually brokering the power that uh, needs to line up for a Joffrey uh, Marjorie marriage. Or a Tom and Marjorie marriage. Yes. Uh, like, when when they made the marriage pact with Joffrey, they were not allying with Joffrey. They were allying with Tywin. Yes. In fact, uh, recently, having rewatched some of the show, they, um, like, they're all cool with getting the power. I know this happens in the books as well. They are trying to figure out what kind of person Joffrey is because they that's the part of the deal they're more concerned about. They don't particularly like Joffrey, and they learn to hate the fucker, which most people do. Uh, but they are willing to, you know, at least go ahead for as long as they can in order to, you know, get the power out of it. Until, until it becomes a threat to, you know, Marjorie's life. Then, then he might drink some poison wine. Or if you believe other theories, have an unrelated rabies-related incident. Uh, uh, maybe it is related. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe Elena Redwine uh, was warning Nymeria at the time. The time traveling Elena. <laughs> the time, the time traveling Elena. Time travel Elena. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, so what are these other parts? They're, so part of it gonna feel kind of disconnected when you first when we first talk. About well, we have sure. we have House Targaryen here and House Lannister here, and they haven't popped up yet, no matter how much I talk about them. Um, interesting. That yeah, that's correct. House Targaryen and House Lannister. Uh, are not particularly relevant to this theory. Interesting. Hmm. So who else could... Well, there is another person who could easily 
uh, bring fire to the reach. And that's Yaron Greyjoy, Ooh, who is babe. currently who is currently attacking the reach. He's taken the Shield Islands and he's going towards Old Town. And uh, he is an Ironborn, and they like to, you know, basically like treat the Geneva Convention like a bingo card. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) oh my god dude dude all i have to do is a chemical weapons attack and miss the POW, <laughs> and I've got bingo. <laughs> That's the funniest thing either of us has ever said, Zach. Thank you. Holy shit. Okay. The forces of the Ironborn are currently... Currently outside, uh, currently in control, I should say, of the Shield Islands uh, at the mouth of the Mander. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I don't think we mentioned Euron at all as a candidate for riding a uh, undead skeletal dragon, which feels like an oversight on our part. Uh, ding. Uh <laughs> in the bad dragon show Viserion is raised as an undead dragon <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have sussed out a corner here yeah uh, I think so yeah uh, and also in the bad dragon show uh, you know Euron kills a dragon uh, and he also talks about when the Kraken weds a dragon and has a horn called Dragon Binder, uh, which he's sent Victorian out to get a dragon. So there are various ways uh, that you can state that, you know, uh, Euron will end up with the corpse or a living dragon. Uh, and that is entirely plausible. There's evidence pointing towards that. Oh my god, you got another ding in that hilarious Geneva Convention joke, and I didn't even notice. Uh, yeah, of course this... How could this not be a ding? Total Warfare uh, is practiced with frequency in A Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah. Uh, examples include... Um, where did it go on my list? Examples include those by Tywin Lannister and Maegor the Cruel. Uh, this is not. I'm I'm not trying to um, trying to suggest that these will be direct parallels, but just that there is precedent for. Oh yeah. S- yes, by, entirely. By there there are people who uh like just you know whatever it takes to win the war and uh make sure there's not a future war you could like uh tywin yeah uh with the way he killed uh the reigns uh and you could also argue with like the decisions he made during the sack of king's landing to Intentionally make sure the, uh, you know, Targaryen children were dead to make sure there wasn't a conflict in the future. Uh, that is uh, entirely the sort of thing you could see happening in the books because it's it's happened before. And Wait, I'm sorry. Just, I, I, I was reading something. Go go back a couple of sentences. I think you got a thing. Uh, well, I mean, uh, what was it the uh, sack of King's Landing or was it the killing of the reigns? There was the killing. There we go. Ding. All right. Well, yeah, because yeah, continue, they, we'll type it out. They, they destroyed an entire castle full of people just to make sure they like you know wiped them out, uh, which could happen to Highgarden too. And that one be down here. The reigns of Castamere were trapped inside their castle. 
and all executed one fell swoop. Yeah, they all they all drowned. They they had a death by water. It's entirely possible in this one, uh they all have a death by fire. High Garden is uh, let me pull up what it looks like. Hi, Garden. Uh, before we go on, uh, because we're uh, we're definitely we're we're circling a drain, so to speak. Before we go on, I have a quote that I want to throw in up in this corner, uh, to round it out up here. Uh, he should have made a uh, another island out of their skulls. Whew. That's what father would have done. But Robert never had the stomach. The stomach. And I love this. I'm going to write the whole thing because it's such a good line. Robert never had the stomach uh, to keep peace in the realm. That's such a line. And then she goes on. The, she she says this out loud to Kyburn. The Iron Men have not dared raid the Reach since Dagon Greyjoy sat the Sea Stone chair. This is when she is first learning about Euron's encroachments into the Westerlands and the and and just the beginning parts of their raid on the reach. Uh, and and of course it's Dagon Greyjoy, which is uh, you know, Lovecraft. It's very that is just straight up Dagon. There is no Cthulhu yeah. in this theory, but there sure could be if we wanted there to be. Yes. Yeah, we're but gonna, like we're, who, we're gonna have a lengthy the one, additional like, tinfoil session at the end of this, by the way. <laughs> well oh well for sure. And also like the Iron Islands were only there was only like some Lovecraft in the background until Euron showed up. <laughs> then it came out in the foreground. And the fact that the last time somebody invaded the Reach, it was Dagon Greyjoy, yes. feels like a wink from George R. R. Martin as to where we're going. Yes! So, I should know every depiction of Highgarden I can find, there are trees everywhere on that <laughs> thing. In the show, there's a bunch of trees underneath it. In all the drawings from the different books, there's just trees in between walls. Yep. Goodness, uh, Smokey the Bear needs to warn him about some things that could go wrong. All right, uh, slow your roll. Let's get there together. Yes. Uh, Zach, where is High Garden? High Garden is in the Reach. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, hold on, I'll I'll, I'll give you a hint here. Gonna gonna underline a thing. Where is it? I swear to God, I yes. Whoop. Underlines that word right there. Underlines what word? Boop, boop. Oh, Mander. Uh, it is. Well, let me pull up my mouth. Or not mouth map. The uh, the mouth of the Mander is uh. Uh, it's it's not far from the Shield Islands and from like it's non it's on the ocean road. It's on the Mander River as well. Yep. Uh, High so stands there's... on a on a verdant hill, overlooking the Mander. Uh, at the intersection of the Rose Road and the Ocean Road. Yeah, there's another. Uh, well, the Rose Road runs all the way down to Old Town, and uh, links up with the King's Road in the Kingswood. Uh, so we have, we have one more corner to fill. Like High Garden is a strategically important place. It's very, it's very interesting. Uh, and it is well fucking within striking distance of Euron Greyjoy, assuming he control, maintains control of the Shield Islands, uh, so that his escape is not cut off by, um, by the Red Wine Fleet. Uh, yes, and like we've seen, we've seen uh, Ironborn attacks well inland because 
Theon takes Winterfell, and that's about as inland as you can get in the north. Uh, so it would not be a stretch at all for Euron to take some place that's not that far from the coast at all, when you think about it. Especially because, you know, he can sail up a river. People sell boats up rivers in uh, A Ab- Song of Ice and Fire. Absolutely. Zach, there is one more piece. And this is my favorite piece. This is this little section down here, okay? Okay. Get get there with me together. I, I assume you're on the wiki. Um, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking at a map uh, that I found on Twitter. But uh, let me go to the wiki. Yeah, pull that can, up. Uh, can, you, can you take a look for a brief plot synopsis of <laughs> the second Duncan Egg no- uh, novella, novella. The Mystery Knight? Uh, that, I believe, is the third one. Um, uh, the uh, Sworn wait, which Sword. Sword. Oh, the Sworn Sword. That's right. The Hedge Knight, Sworn Sword, the Mystery Knight. I should read the Duncan Egg books eventually. Dude, they're so uh, good. Uh, and and I, unless I'm confusing it with another thing, uh, they are the audiobook is read by Harry Lloyd, who plays Viserys in the in Game of Thrones. Ooh, yeah. neat! Not Viserys in the Good Dragon Show, Viserys in the Bad Dragon Show. Yes, <laughs> the one the one we don't honor with the name Vizzy T. Yes. Uh... And I bet I bet people who have read. I bet people who really who like the Duncan Egg novellas like I do. I bet some of them have already gotten to the end of this. Very brief plot synopsis. So I see. I saw the names Gardner and Lannister pop up. So you want me to read that sentence? Um, sure. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I I have oh. that as theming. Yes. Give me the Gardner Lannister one. Uh, let me let me read straight from the wiki. At Standfast, Dunk and uh, Penis. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't say Venus. Uh, <laughs> find, find Sir Eustace cleaning the shield of Sir Wilbert Osprey, who lived in the time of Giles Gardner and King Lancel Lannister. When Eustace is done telling the Hedge Knight the story of Sir Wilbert, they inform him about the dam. Uh, when Eustace. Okay. King, so uh, King Giles and uh, King Giles Gardner, and that's fine for our purposes. Some somebody had built a uh, a dam had been built, and somebody refused to take it down, causing water to dry up. In the sworn uh, sword, ding! By the way, ding, 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 ding. Uh, Dunk discovers. Sure, Martin has an asteroid with penis, right? Uh, <laughs> uh Sir Penis Sir Venus of the Brown Shield. Uh <laughs> Dunk Dunk in the Sworn Sword. In the Sworn Sword, Dunk discovers that uh Lady Weber has oh my god, I can't spell. Lady Weber uh has damned the Checky water. Uh uh, causing uh, uh, to fill her moat and feed her crops. Uh, causing those of uh, use of uh, Sir Eustace to wither. And and this was this was one of the things that sold me is that this, that you just referenced right down here, this is happening at the same time. They are, in t- uh, George Martin is intentionally drawing a parallel between this and this, right? The things that happen in in the Sworn Sword yeah. are being compared directly to this. Boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. boop. So, huh. Zach, what happens at the end? Right before the trial by combat. Right before the trial by combat, uh, Euron knocks I, uh, Garden into the river. 
<laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, before the before the trial. Before the trial. Uh, Watts. Oh, in Watts Wood. Watts Wood. Watts Wood. Uh, what what happens before the trial by combat? In the show, like in the, well, in, the, well, in, in the sworn sword. Oh, in the sworn sword. Uh, I have to go back to the wiki article uh, and not look at uh, Sir Bettis of the Brown Shield. Uh... You're not allowed to laugh at the name Sir Bettis. <laughs> it's a good name. <laughs> How dare you? Um... Excuse me. He comes for a long. <laughs> Proud, hard line of Benesis. So this is just biggest dickus all over again. <laughs> uh, is there something funny about the name Benis of the Brown Shield? Uh, I I, um, do, I do have the plot of this memorized. Would you like me to just toss it to you? Please do. Uh, Watts Wood burns down. In either oh. 211 or 212 AC. It's not clear uh, what year that uh, uh, that one takes place in, but that's not important. And this all happens while this parallel is in our brains. Right here. Yeah. Right? This all happens at the same time. Reminding us of the time the uh, Lannisters and the Gardeners teamed up to fight the Targaryens. Yes, and the Gardeners got flame broiled. Yes. Uh, in, hang on, where did it go? Uh, I don't really have room for it, but 211, uh, 210, 211, and 212... Uh, the whole of the reach was plagued by a terrible, terrible drought. Uh, and this, you know, yeah. this all this is all part of the same sort of sort of sequence of events. There's a drought. Uh, Lady Rohan's crops are dying, so she dams the checky water to feed her crops and fill her moat because there's such. A However, that but that causes people downstream to have their problem made even worse. Correct. Uh, so, in in droughts can happen in times of seasonal change, especially like uh, you know during a dry season, which can oftentimes overlap with winter in other areas. Uh, ding. And that means High Garden could dry out and be a bunch of dead trees before Euron flies his undead dragon over and burns it all. Uh, droughts are common in times of erratic climate. Yeah. Uh, are you ready for the, uh, uh, for the crown on this tinder castle? Please do, please do. High Garden features a great hedge maze called the Briar Maze. Uh, between its inner and outer walls. It serves as a barrier to intruders. Zach, as you may know, I have something of a of a relationship with the Christmas tree. You do. You've you've worked with uh, Christmas trees. One could say all your life, actually. <laughs> Uh, I have, I have exact, I have two real world clues. This is one of them. Whoop. Mm -hmm. The other is, quote, when devoid of water, 
Christmas trees can become kindling in less than a week. Yes. Pine trees and, like, honestly, a lot of trees can die very quickly when they don't have their, you know, needs met, water, things like that. Yes. Uh, and that makes, like, them burn very quickly. This is uh, part of the reason you get such severe forest fires in places like California is because some of those trees are just dead and they go up really quick. Uh, so that makes perfect sense if High Garden's plants start to die, which is entirely conceivable, then it could be basically a tinderbox waiting to be burned by someone like Euron Greyjoy. All right, let me... Yeah, you got ding, like 50 dings, right? You got it. You nailed it. I've been stoked about this for like a week and a half. Can I paint it for you, please? Go for it, please, please. Euron Greyjoy has taken Old Town. Euron Greyjoy sails up the Mander, and the Tyrells of Highgarden, possibly with Sansa, we'll come back to that in a minute, the Tyrells of Highgarden hold themselves up in Highgarden, knowing that they have extremely strong walls, very skilled archers, and the Ironborn are best on the water. So they hole up inside Highgarden. Uh, understanding they will likely be safe there. So Euron Greyjoy gives them the middle finger, rocks the rest of the way up the Mander, and um, and dams it higher up the river. And over the course of two or three weeks, the water flowing down the Mander slowly slows and then stops. And this giant hedge maze surrounding High Garden turns from, you know, a a lush flowering rose bush. It turns from that into a row of Christmas trees that have been devoid of water and it's now the 15th of February. This row of tinder a quarter mile wide that all somebody needs to do is give a gentle little spark to and it'll go up. And then instead of being protected by a ring of briar bushes, they are held in by this terrible ring of fire. Uh, And, and the, and unable to escape like the reigns of Castamere, uh, the citizens of high garden burn to death within their castle or else try to escape through the hedge maze and end up getting lost as they are taking left turns and rights, unable to know where they're going in the smoke and flame. It is, uh... <laughs> it is hell. Yeah! It is, that, that is a fate worse than death that is also death. Uh, that, that is as bad as it can get for them and it will be kind of beautiful in how awful it is right right it's like, gonna like there's going to be someone is going to be either inside or outside looking at it and it is going to be described as gorgeous because it is and that it's will, going to be it, that it's going to be that's the interesting thing is i think that might be if not the first, one of the first times we will have in the Song of Ice and Fire novel, somebody saying, I am right now at Highgarden. Like, we're, we're going to have George's really flowery language to describe, even with the plants drying out and dying, it's still going to be a gorgeous city. And then in that same chapter, perhaps later, or a chapter later, maybe we see somebody watch the plants slowly die, right? Yeah. Maybe whoever's there, like, can see, they get there and it's gorgeous. And like, there's all these, you know, nice things I can say about it. And then the plants slowly wither and die as winter goes on. And then they get to watch it burn in flames. Yes. But I think, like, I, I love the Euron Greyjoy angle. But like, yes, there's honestly a meaningful chance that it is just an accident. That... With the the climate catastrophes that are going to be going on, right? The reach is at a consistent forty five or fifty degrees, and there is ice damming the north of the, the all the rivers to the north. It just dries up naturally. 
Uh, and, and it just, you know, it's just great Chicago fire. Someone kicks over an oil lamp and they all go up. Yeah. Uh, however, I do have a, I do have a, a couple of quotes here that I would like to share with you. There's a little bit of ominous foreshadowing surrounding High Garden. I found. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, quote. You need to come south. You need to taste of. You need a taste of summer before it flees. In High Garden, in High Garden, there are fields of golden roses that stretch as far as the eye can see. The fruits are so ripe that they explode in your mouth. Melons, peaches, fire plums. You've never tasted such sweetness. That is uh, Robert talking to Ned in the first book. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and, quote, this one's my favorite. Uh, when Marjorie and Olena are talking to Sansa about spiriting her away to High Garden. Hmm. Uh, because they're going to marry her to Willis Tyrell, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. Quote, you will love Highgarden as I do. I know it. Once you see it, you'll never leave. Ooh. Is that a good line or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good line. I know. I it's so good. <laughs> You can you can check out any time you like. But yes. It's never <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. That's right? pretty pretty good. I mean, like, like it's this thing, right? It's this thing right here. This like, and it's very George Martiny, right? Because a hedge maze is like. I don't know if George Martin is a mystery person, but he sure seems like one. In mystery yes. novels, the hedge maze is like this symbol of narcissistic opulence. This this uh, status yeah. symbol of wealth overwhelming. Uh, and it's very George Martiny for the richest and one of the richest and one of the most powerful houses. Uh to be cooked to death inside their own castle because of one of these symbols of wealth. Yeah. Also, there's, like, a, you know, plenty of, like, things where the hedge maze, like, uh, can, like, be seen as uh, symbolically having a lot to do with, like, control and losing it and uh, insane bad things happening. Like, yeah. uh... The Shining, The Shining. Yeah! Uh, like that famous, like, uh, Jack standing over the hedge maze scene, and then uh, with his wife and kid walking in it, as he's slowly starting to lose it. And then later, uh, you know, uh, lots of death. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, hmm. Also, and I really, I really can't stress this enough, hedge mazes are awesome. <laughs> yeah correct and and they are and it is a really clever really inventive thing to have that on the outside of a castle like instead of a moat you know what i mean yeah like it's on it's yeah. on the it's on the outside yeah it's it's uh, an alternative yeah instead of us making a moat to make it hard for you to get through uh it's a secret passageway yeah basically uh, uh, a a serious barrier to any army trying to get into High Garden, uh, and also like super cool. And if we don't see it, I might actually be disappointed <laughs> because that's such a cool yeah. setup. I'd be really sad if we don't get to see it. Yeah, exactly. We don't have a Tyrell point of view. I don't believe so. No. That's, one, we of, have that's one of the rubs. I don't know how we would see this. Yeah, unless, like, Aaron Greyjoy stays alive a lot longer than we think he will. But, like, I don't know. Uh, George R. R. Martin said no new point of view characters, which just can't. It seems wrong, right? But 
who knows? I mean, I, it doesn't seem appropriate to me, but it could be Cersei. That's true. Like it would and, serve and... it would serve Cersei very well, uh, 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 to die in fire in in the place of the uh in the seat of the family that she's been fighting against for several years. But I don't like it. Yeah. The closest character there right now is Sam, but that also doesn't feel that doesn't feel like his story. Unless of course Sam uh, will be the principal fighter against Euron Greyjoy in the books, which I'm kind of coming around to that idea you, a little you bit. You know? Like uh, uh, I am kind of a champion of Sam the Dragon Slayer. I have also been a Sam the Dragon Slayer kind of person. I've always thought it would be appropriate if he like killed a dragon and did it outside of the sight of all his uh, Night's Watch brothers, so none of them actually believe him. Much like when he slayed a white. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my dude has been practicing his bow work. Yeah, and like. There's also, yeah, you've mentioned this before, that like classic fantasy trope that we see in The Hobbit and other things that are uh, inspired by The Hobbit of just some uh, unknown or relatively known, relatively unknown archer who takes the lucky shot that takes down a dragon and then like doesn't really do much otherwise. That's like a famous thing. Yeah. Uh, in fantasy. Just like, uh, and this archer, we don't even know all that much about him historically, was the one who brought down the dragon. He was just, you know, fighting for his life. And that's all there is to that story. Yeah. Uh, that's like a famous fantasy trope. That could be Sam. He could just be, uh, you know, a guy who is there and brings down Euron's dragon later in the story. Yeah. Um. Uh. Maybe after Old Town Falls, Sam escapes with a bunch of books. Um finds himself in high garden climbs to the highest tower on high garden and brings down one of euron's dragons uh with with you know on like his fourth shot with the bow on his last obsidian tipped arrow he brings down one of euron's dragons and then collapses from smoke inhalation and dies under high garden yeah. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Oh my god. He draws the bow, screams Horn Hill. Uh oh no. Of course he screams Castle Black. Yeah. Let's it go. He sees the dragon scream, sees it crash into the water, and then he collapses. It could even it could even be sort of like the uh, Davos chapter, right, where like the dam bursts and uh, he wakes up uh, in the water later, or like washed up yeah. on shore. Yeah, he wakes up like like he wakes up on the like in one of the towers of Highgarden, um, but like the reach is flooded, uh, so the water, the lake that was caused by the damming has flooded yeah. all of the all the parts of the reach and the mander is flooded so much that like like it comes up to like the fourth story of the castle of high garden and he looks out and he's on this tiny little island on the top of the tower ooh yeah that's kind of sick <laughs> yeah zach that's kind of fucking baller i i like that a lot yeah Huh, okay, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I think All right, it's good. I'm, I'm on board. I mean, I think it's pretty good. Right, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. L like, why have a hedge maze if we're not going to see it? Yeah, why Why build all this beautiful lore? And George R. Martin was recently just chatting about, like, Casterly Rock in uh, a blog post. He said... We'll see it in the books eventually. Like, why why make all these great locations if you're not going to have it from somebody's perspective? I, kinda I agree. Like, I kind of like Sam sees Highgarden. It's also possible that Asha Greyjoy 
is the POV here. Could go there. There's a there's a lot of possible people. People move around a lot. Yeah, we don't really know what's gonna happen with the Greyjoys. Like like yeah. the, Theon and we have Oscar four Greyjoy points. Yeah. Uh we have four Greyjoy point of views and zero Tyrells. Do we what is the closest POV there? I mean, I guess after like Jamie and Brienne and them are done in the Riverlands, they could move to the Reach. But yeah, no, that that might take most of a book. But then again, well, uh, Jamie, Jamie is the one who kills Ciaran in the Bad Dragon show, so it could be that like once everything's done in the Riverlands, Jamie's said, uh, "Hey, uh, Jamie's told, hey, uh, we need help. There's some nonsense going down in the Reach, and you're the closest person because where he's at in the Riverlands, he would actually be able to." Just go down south real quick. He could take one of the roads right there. Uh, it's it's also possible that what that the things we're describing they don't need to happen in the winds of winter. This could this could all be a dream of spring stuff. Yeah, right? that's true as well. This could and, be late. And George R. R. Martin did not say we would get new uh, point of view characters in Dream of Spring, just not in the winds of winter. Uh, uh, also, although I, he may seem like he won't any more at all, but we'll see. I don't we, believe him. As we have discussed, uh, I'm his phrasing in that statement was ambiguous. Uh, it is That's unclear true. whether he meant there would be no characters getting a POV that have not had any before. It's unclear if he meant that, or I won't be adding. I won't be inventing new characters that will be POVs. So like. We haven't had a who's a good we haven't had a dollarous ed POV. If yes. he meant if he meant the second and not the first, we could get a dollarous ed POV. Just not it's a character a, we've seen before. Yes. That's just true. not a like, you know, one of Melisandra's old classmates. We're not gonna get one of her POVs. I think that it's really? I, I I'm inclined to think it's that way. I think that we are going to get POVs we've never seen before. Uh, uh, just not of characters we've never met before. Actually, a dollar is Ed POV sounds kind of fun. It does. It does sound very fun. Can we can we make it work that dollar is said? Oh, we talked about this. A gilly POV would be very fun. A gilly POV would be very fun, like and she gilly... would be in the right area because she is currently in the reach and will yes. presumably be staying. She's one. Oh, oh. Um, it could be Alaras too. Yes. Uh, uh, Alaras. Um, uh, we have seen. We haven't had an Alaras POV, but I think that that's reasonably likely, actually. Uh, yeah. If we're gonna get somebody else's, uh, that's a good contender. Yeah, because Sorella has a. The lot only of... the only fan stake is not currently uh locked up by Dora Martalia. Uh, yeah, like, she has, Sorella has a lot of plot to cover. Uh, and she's not just going to be hanging out with Sam the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, Zach, that's the theory. If, if you have any questions that you want answered, you can put them in the comments of this video. Oh, I'm well, sorry, no, not the comments. We have yes. a Google Well, form. I mean, you can also comment. You can also comment them here. We just won't answer them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, if I get any questions on this video, uh, I will delete the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, uh, hang on, I'm going to check right now as we're recording. Uh, we presently have 948 subscribers. How is that possible? Woo! Oh my, oh Good lord. Go tell your friends to subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but make sure that they understand that what they're doing is a bad investment of their time. <laughs> yes. Uh because worst best case scenario, they will become too invested in a very good book series. Worst case scenario, they will become like measurably dumber by talking to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, we have another dumb theory lined up. They might think Joffrey died of rabies. So, yeah, but that's a, Zach, that's the a next warning. theory is way stupider. I am pumped. I am I'm so excited. Unironically pumped. Zach, I am going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you. Zach, end on a joke. 
Uh, high garden, more like fry garden. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, use, I had a friend who used to have a high garden in their backyard, but, uh, you know, <laughs> they got by the DEA. <laughs> My my high garden is legal as long as I don't ever possess more than two ounces. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in New York, baby. Yeah! <laughs> Goodbye! Bye!